Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Dr. Teeth. Today we are going to learn about pericoronitis. How does it happen? Why does it happen? And how can we treat it? Whether we have home remedies that can treat it and if not, what are the various procedures by which a dentist can treat pericoronitis. So this video will be helpful for both the dental professionals as well as general population so if you are not a dentist you will find this video helpful because here i will be keeping the terms really simple and i will try to explain the pericoronitis in a very easy manner so pericoronitis it is made up of three words peri means around coro refers to the crown that is the occluding surface of the teeth and itis refers to inflammation so Pericoronitis, it means the inflammation that is occurring around a tooth, that is a pericoronitis. So it is a common pathological condition in young adults causing pain and swelling around the last tooth of the mouth, that is the wisdom tooth or the third molar. So why does pericoronitis happen? Whenever we have a partially erupted third molar, like if the person is in his 20s like up to 25 it could be temporary because the tooth is still erupting and when it is at a partial eruption stage it is partially covered by the gingiva right so as you can see in this picture here we have our partially impacted tooth or you can say partially erupted tooth and it is covered on the distal side by the gingiva so because of food accumulation there can be infection in this area in the gingival region that can cause pain and swelling and also if you have a supra erupted opposing tooth means your opposing tooth has erupted a little more than expected or because of trauma also like when you bite and you have a trauma at the gingival area there can be pericoronitis so now we know what is pericoronitis it is an inflammation around the last unerupted tooth and usually it occurs in the young individuals because that is the only age when our third molar is erupting and why is it happening because of food accumulation trauma right so let us see how does the pain start when the third molar fails to completely erupt that is it is still beneath the gingiva then this tissue can get infected because of the food lodgement and accumulation of microbes in space between the gingival tissue and crown of the tooth. The trapped food particles will undergo decomposition because of poor cleaning and oral hygiene. So there will be accumulation of plaque, calculus. Basically, there will be growth of microbes which will result in inflammation. And if it is untreated, it can lead to further spread into other soft tissues and complications like Ludwig angina and this flabby gingival tissue that is overlapping the crown it is called as operculum okay what are the different types of pericoronitis it can be acute subacute chronic acute means it has a quick onset so this type of pericoronitis will have severe pain that will be localized around the partially erupted tooth then we have the subacute pericoronitis so this condition is when we have slight subsided symptoms of the acute phase. There will be slight extra oral swelling with stiffness of jaw. There can be regional lymph adenopathy that is swelling of your lymph node. And there can be pus discharge from the operculum. And then we have the chronic pericoronitis that is the recurrent pericoronitis. So when the pericoronitis occurs again and again, like if you have opted for home remedies or you have not treated the condition and it has subsided on its own but again after a few weeks or few months it is coming back again that is chronic pericoronitis so to sum up the signs and symptoms of pericoronitis are there will be pain in that area and that pain can radiate to the ear throat and the floor of the mouth as well gingival swelling obviously Redness, halitosis can be there, that is bad odor can be there because we have decomposed food accumulated there, right? Pus discharge and salty taste because of that discharge. 
there will be difficulty in opening the mouth that is trismus there can be difficulty in swallowing that is dysphagia your submandibular lymph nodes can be palpable that is submandibular lymph adenopathy fever malaise loss of appetite so all these are the signs and symptoms of pericoronitis so how do we do the diagnosis of this condition how do you know that it is pericoronitis so first of all the signs symptoms and the clinical appearance of this condition like you have an operculum on the last uninterrupted tooth that is sufficient to know that it is pericoronitis additionally you can take an x ray and you will see the area involved and you will see the angulation of the impaction whether it is mesial angular vertical impaction right so based on the clinical picture and the x ray you can come to a conclusion and one more important thing is the history so with the help of all these three we can know that it is pericoronitis now coming to the treatment first one is a non surgical management and the second one is the surgical management so when the patient comes to you and you take the history of the patient and if the patient tells you that it is the first time he has this condition or let's say he is just 24 25 years of age and he has this condition so still the patient has a chance that his last molar will erupt because still that eruptive potential is present in that age up to 24 25 the third molar will erupt so you can wait and watch you can just give a non surgical management you can irrigate the area with saline or betadine and you can prescribe antibiotics to the patient for 5 days and the patient can be fine and since the patient still has that age where his tooth will erupt if the tooth has a proper inclination the condition might not happen again but in case the patient has a history of recurrent pericoronitis and if he has surpassed the age when usually the teeth erupts you can go for surgical management the first one is operculectomy i told you about operculum right operculum is the gingival tissue covering the third molar right so operculectomy means cutting down that gingival tissue so it is a minor oral surgical procedure where we remove the overlapping gingival tissue on the affected tooth we can do it either with a blade laser right and then the last option is extraction of the tooth if that tooth has caries or if the tooth has such a impaction that it will not align properly any time in the future we have the option of extracting the tooth the patient has to be careful with this condition because it can spread and cause some complications also like the ludwig angina localized periodontal abscess peritonsillar abscess cellulitis now coming to a big question how much of the home remedy is effective in treatment of pericoronitis so generally there are patients who ignore the condition and they avoid going to the dentist and they think that it will cure on itself so for those patients yes it can subside on its own like you can do warm saline rinses you can use dilute hydrogen peroxide and you have to do thorough but gentle brushing but one thing you should keep in mind is that by these home remedies the condition might subside for some time but it might happen again because you are not removing the cause so a proper treatment needs to be done or if you are in that age when your teeth can erupt and it is a vertical impaction means your tooth is not mal aligned and it will come to its proper position later you might never need to visit a dentist but for others there are chances that it will happen again so you need to treat the cause and if your condition is chronic like if it is happening again and again and it is severe you have pain fever swelling you need immediate medical attention So with this we have covered all the important things about pericoronitis. I hope you found the video helpful and if you did do let me know in the comment section below. If you have any queries also you can ask me in the comment section below and I'll try my best to help you out. I will see you in the next video. Take very good care of yourself. Allah Hafiz.